Hey, welcome back to another episode of fishing. Uh, this is in Louisiana, finally. I know I've been in Florida uh, the last three episodes, but I'm back in Louisiana and it's hot. But I'm launching out of Port Fouchon because here I can fish the barrier islands and the water temperature is getting up close to the, into the mid 80s now and this is pretty warm for speckled trout to be comfortable in shallow water once the middle of the day comes around. So a place like Port Fouchon provides uh, structure in deep water like rocks, submerged rocks or jetties. It also provides rigs that, uh, that the fish can take refuge in. Uh, along and in, and that will be in deeper water. It also provides an amazing amount of bait. There's bait all around me as I'm as I'm talking to you here. The pogies jumping, shrimp popping out of the water. So I'm hoping for a really good day. Got a trout right away. It's a nice trout too. Very nice, nice fish. It's a nice 13 and a half. Got him right away, a little male. Another trout. This is a small white trout. Not what we're looking for. Sweet. There's another nice trout off the rig. This is kind of where I was hoping to go. Is this is the this is the scenario that should be holding trout. This water temperature is high. And I've been to the mid 80s now. And so this is the type of water that type of habitat that the trout will congregate on. Oh, shit. I didn't lose that pole. Can you believe that? Can you freaking believe that? I didn't lose that pole. Dumb thing, though. I left the lure in the water. Yeah. My. Ooh, that's ridiculous. I gotta get some fresh water on here. Oh, I got another one. Ah. Well, <clears throat> look at that. <clears throat> That's not good. <laughs> Don't leave your wine in the water. I guess this is probably a redfish. <laughs> Man. You never know what's gonna happen when you're out here fishing. I think I lost it. That's good. So maybe we're getting somewhere now. Uh, you know, that's another about the same size as the first one I caught. These are both males. Uh, there's a lot of fish around this rig, and I'm I'm on the down current side of it. So that was a nice rig. It had a, it, it started with a nice little bite, and a couple of trout coming in, and then pretty quickly a dolphin showed up, and then the bite really kind of died off. But you know, even when I got there, but especially after the dolphin got there, the bite, what bites there were, were right tight to the pilings, <clears throat> and that's not unusual 
when you got big predators coming in. And there was a big, there was like a four foot shark that came, followed my lure in right to the boat. So that, I'm gonna have to move because that spot, I think it's pretty much dried up until those big predators leave. Maybe I can come back and hit it again. I'm getting a lot of hits. I'm not connecting on them though, but I'm getting a lot of hits on hard baits here. Fishing over top, submerged rock, line of rocks, which are in 10 feet. I was throwing an 18 MR. I got a couple strikes on that. I saw a trout, so I know the trout are here. I know trout are hitting it. And I just had a fish on first cast with this jerk bait. But I not get that fish in. I've also seen redfish swim by, so I know there's redfish here and trout. It's pretty awesome because I'm in 10 foot of water over top of this rock pile. So obviously the trout are suspending. Oh! Whoa! Oh boy. Uh oh, this is something really big. Ah, look at that. Broke me off. Boy, this spot's driving me crazy. This is the second jerk bait I've lost at this spot. This line is really frayed up too. I don't know what that was, maybe a shark. Cause I have seen some sharks. I got, I, I definitely saw one trout come up and hit my Miradine. But um, I've got, I caught a ladyfish. I know I had that. There's some, definitely a lot of fish here, but, and there are some trout. Okay, another cutter 90 in a mullet pattern tied straight to the main line braid. I don't think they're going to be have such an easy time clipping that braid off. There's a pile of fish around here. I just saw a school of seriously big reds swim under my boat. And those are in the 40 inches. So I don't know, maybe I'm wasting my time trying to catch trout in here. It's probably pretty dangerous for trout to be feeding in this area. Okay, well I caught whatever these things are. Got one of them. I want to find out. I'll follow that sucker. Oh my goodness. I missed that. I was looking down at the engine. I don't know what the heck that was. Come on, bruiser. Still don't know what this thing is. I have the lure tied straight to the braid here, so I'm a little more comfortable putting pressure on this fish. There, I can see it. It's brown. Probably a redfish. Could be a big, could be a shark though. See it, I can't identify it yet. It's a brown, yeah, it's a shark. Okay, well, buddy, you may come in this boat because you don't get to chew off the fluorocarbon like you did before.
a hefty one. It's a pretty shark. Wow. Is that a black tip? Out a little more before I try to bring him in the boat. I'll probably get him soon. Got my long, got my long net. This thing is extended. Ah, dang. Well, he's gone. Ah, another jerk bait gone. That's the third one. Yeah, you eventually chewed right through that braid. Well, I think that's the that's the answer. I can't. I really can't fish here for trout. If there are trout here, I'm just not going to be able to get to them. So I'm going to have to get off of this. Boy, this place, this this mound of rocks is absolutely full of life, though. There's a lot of bait fish here, and there's some really big fish too. Well, I'm back to the rig and uh, I came back here after another hour or more had passed just to see if I could find this place without the sharks and dolphins because they definitely shut down the bite and this one was here waiting for me. But what I noticed right away that first trout is that I caught it a good I don't know 15 feet off of the pilings which means there probably aren't sharks here and I don't, I don't see any dolphins so it seems like there there's some trout down here keeper sized trout like that one right there there might be a good number of them a little bit bigger so sure enough next cast hit a couple casts a couple more hits and another fish coming in the boat they're stacked up here it looks like and uh, able to be out away from the pilings about 10 15 feet there we go another one on the very next cast So there it goes. Next cast, boom, another fish. Looks like they're stacked up here. Interestingly, most of these that I'm, I've caught here at this rig are male. Really makes you wonder where the females are right now. There we go. Another one on the very next cast. This is just how trout fishing should be, at least with this size. You should be catching them one after the other. Now that's a, that's a bigger fish there. I'm going to have to measure that one. That's a, that's a nice looking fish there. So what am, I, what am I catching these trout on that are stacked up here by this rig? I'm throwing a throwing a it's actually a matrix shad uh, mullet the uh, midnight mullet on a quarter ounce jig head and uh, I'm you know this is in nine foot of water so and I I want they're still fairly close to the rig so and they seem to be often hitting it when it falls so it, it's kind of an advantage to have a bait that falls a little slower then say because I might be fishing a 3.8 in this situation uh, but the quarter floats a little bit quarter ounce floats a little bit more than the 3.8 uh, and so they they really seem to respond to that and it's the, the current has slowed down we're getting close to high tide so I don't have to deal with the current as much uh, whereas before I was fishing a 3.8 here Next cast. 
Wow, there is a pile of trout here that are feeding. This is also another 16 inch. Another beautiful trout. They actually have gotten a little bit bigger in size as the as the minutes have passed. There you go. Thought for a second they had the bite had died, but not completely. Another male. A lot of males here. A couple of those were the bigger ones were females that were here. They are in one exact spot. It's the only place I've gotten a hit, right between the two sides of the of the rig. A hit there. They're just hanging right. Ah. They're waiting right there. Catching the 12 to 13, but I'm also catching these 16s, which are which seem to be females. So there's a combination of male and female in here. That's a mess. And just like that, the bite died. Actually, I had to. I had caught a fish, then on the next cast, I threw the bait off. It was broken off in the reel, so I grabbed another reel, but I had to retie. By the time I got retied out there again, the bite had stopped. <clears throat> and there's a couple of reasons for that. We, we may have retie tied according to the chart. We're at high tide now. So that very well could have happened. And, you know, I, I really believe the, the last, the hour before the high tide is one of the most productive times for speckled trout. And uh, that's what we hit. We hit that window just before high tide. And when that current stops, the feeding's gonna stop. Well, that's a wrap on the day for me. Had some fun. Had a lot of excitement with too big a fish on my line, tearing me up, losing over $30 worth of gear. Uh, but at least I didn't lose my pole. So hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. And I'll catch you on the next one.